In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. And our Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of 2 Corinthians. And to really understand what's going on in this particular passage, you have to really dig down into the context. The Church of Corinth was a good congregation, but like a lot of good congregations, even to this day, they had a lot of problems. And that's part of the reason that they're some of the longest epistles in Paul's letters. Uh, of the letters that we have, and there's good evidence to suggest that we're missing several of Paul's letters, but of the letters that we have that are included in the, the canon of the Scripture, based on that, you look at the length of the letters, and it's not the longest, but First and Second Corinthians are among the longest. And there's a good reason for that. It's because there is so much content in there and also a lot of problems that Paul had to address. And because of that, he has to deal with them somewhat sternly. As somebody who is a spiritual leader, and this is something that I can say this as a spiritual leader, nobody likes to do. But sometimes you have to point out that people are doing things wrong. And because of this, Paul has had to be a little bit harsh with them to try to get his point across and explain to them how big of a problem this really is. So let's go ahead and look at this passage in 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through 13. He's talking as a member of the apostles here. So our mouth has spoken freely to you. O Corinthians, our heart is opened wide. You are not restrained by us, but you are restrained in your own affections. Now, in a like exchange, I speak as to children, open wide to us also. A couple really important things about that passage. Paul is telling them, look, I'm not hiding the ball here. When he says, I speak freely to you, what he's saying there is, I'm not holding anything back. I don't have any ulterior motives. I'm not trying to manipulate you for my own gain. What I'm doing, I'm laying my cards out on the table. You're seeing everything that's in my heart. I'm not holding anything back from you. And what he's trying to do is dispel any rumors or, or dispel anybody saying, you know, Paul's just being mean or nasty or he's doing this to puff himself up or he just... No, Paul is saying, I'm telling you everything in my heart. I am leaving it all on the table. And it's up to you to decide what to do with it. But the point is, everything that I want to say to you, I'm saying I'm not holding back at all. And when you understand that that is what's going on, you know that Paul's intentions are pure. Because somebody that takes the time and effort and energy to write to them, to explain things to them, to care about their day-to-day -day goings on, to try to help that church maintain a healthy relationship between themselves both individually and as a congregation with Jesus Christ, that is something that is difficult to do. And it takes time. It takes concern. I mean, just think about all that went into writing a letter back then. Everything had to be done by hand. If you made an error, you had to fix it yourself. There was no spell check or anything like that. And so it's a very elaborate process. And what Paul is doing is saying, guys, I am pouring my heart out to you. I'm doing the best that I can. So I don't want rumors flying around out there that... Paul's just doing this for his own good or whatever. I'm leaving everything out there for you to see. And also, I'm not hiding things from you. I'm not hiding any secret tips or anything. Every piece of advice that I want to give that I have to give is yours. Partake of it freely. And by the way, he's also speaking as the other apostles too. Because you'll look that he's using the plural there, that he and other apostles and disciples, probably referring to Titus and Timothy, Titus whom he's actually mentioned specifically by name in this book. He's saying that we're doing everything we can for you, so please pay attention to us and take it to heart. 
So that's just kind of where Paul is starting out, trying to, to plead with them to do so. And I think that this is important because sometimes it's just easier to be criticized by a loved one. Granted, sometimes it can drive you crazy, and I understand that too. But there are certain things that a loved one can say, whether it's a parent, a brother or sister, or a really close friend, that if a stranger or somebody that you just met a few days ago said to you, you would go off on them probably. And that's because if it's somebody that has that familiarity with you that you know has your best interest in heart, you're going to understand that they're not saying it to break you down. They're saying it to build you up. They're saying it because they want you to be better. And that's exactly what where Paul is coming from right here. He's not saying these things to discourage the Corinthians. He's not saying this because he wants them to feel bad. He's saying it because he understands there are real spiritual problems that need to be addressed. And that's why I think that he's leading off with this idea of his heart being opened wide to them. He wants them to know, I care about you. This isn't easy for me to do, but I'm doing it because I genuinely believe it's what's best for you. And so I think that's something for us to follow as Christians. If we ever have to be in a situation where we've got to co correct a brother or even just a friend, somebody that may not even be in the kingdom yet, but somebody that we know, it doesn't hurt to let them know up front and to mention while we're doing so, hey, look, I really am trying to do what's best for you. I'm not doing this because I want to or because it's fun. Frankly, you know, it probably makes you uncomfortable. So say that. But I really thought it was important enough that I had to say something. That's the approach that Paul is taking here. And you'll notice that at the last part of this, he talks about them and, and, and refers to them as children and says that that's the manner in which he is using here. And he says that he that they are not restrained by his words. There's a great line in one of my favorite movies of all time, First Night. It's a Sean Connery movie. It's not one that people know as well as some of the other ones, but I love it. And there's a line that he says in there that there are laws that enslave men and there are laws that make them free. You see, Paul is bringing down the hammer a little bit on him here. But the reason he's doing so is because he wants them to be free of the slavery of their own desires and impulses and affections. That's what this verse is saying. He's saying right now you are a slave to your own impulses. You are doing things that are contrary to Christ because it's what your feelings tell you to do. And I think it's hilarious that this actually, actually contrasts the last news story that we got into, but I'm not going to dig too deep into that. But the point is that my words aren't put here to just be some kind of arbitrary shackle around you to keep you from doing what you want to do. See, you doing what you want to do, that's real slavery. You just following every whim and impulse that happens to hit you in the moment, you're no better than an animal then. You are a slave to your own instincts and impulses. The words that I'm trying to give to you, they don't restrain you. Your impulses restrain you. I'm trying to teach you how to rise above that to make your own conscious moral decisions. And then you have true freedom. Then you are truly free to be the person that God made you to be. And so my words aren't here to restrain you. They're here to actually protect your liberty. And I think it's quite impactful that he's talking to them as children, because isn't that what parents do for their children all the time? When you tell them you have to be back home by this time, that's not a rule that's put out there to restrain them or to keep them from having fun, even though it may feel like it at the time. That rule is there to keep them safe and guard their future liberty and to cause them to make good decisions, to live a better life, one that's more safe, more stable, more responsible. That's exactly the role Paul is playing here, and he, he basically spells that out to them. He addresses them as children, hoping that they will spiritually mature and just like a real child, get to the point to where those rules are still in place, but they're self-imposed. They make good decisions on their own. They do things because they understand them to be right, and also because they understand them to really be long-term what is actually beneficial for them. 
And once they understand that, I think that's where real spiritual maturity starts to set in. And I think that means the lesson for us, the takeaway from us is when someone is criticizing us, we need to be able to recognize what kind of criticism it is. Are they putting laws or sorry, are they putting words out there to restrain us, to break us down, to keep us from moving forward? Or are they actually putting those words out there to try to help encourage us to make right decisions and do the right thing? Because if it's constructive criticism, if it's criticism that is meant to build up in the long run, we need to understand that, recognize it, take it to heart, and hopefully apply it to our lives so that we can be better people in the long run too, just like the Corinthians were with Christ, or with Paul. Stay the course, friends. Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.